And we're recording. Look at that. <laughs> it came up on the screen. As soon as we play, we I hit record. I start eating dry, salty chips. What is with that? I am so at home. It's not funny. Like, I am so off kilter. It's not funny. Professionalism. What does it even mean? What does it even mean? You know what? We might not be very professional, but we make dreams come true. Do we just? We sure do. So last week we had a mammoth, mammoth, mammoth show. It was huge. Like it was the longest thing we've ever done. It yeah, is... it was like Wolfgang Van Halen style mammoth stuff. Absolutely it was. And I, who don't have a very big attention span, really enjoyed the whole thing. It was a really fun time. I could have done it for twice as long. Absolutely. I felt that I wrapped it up way too many times because I had to. Otherwise, it would have been a three-hour show. Uh, but our wonderful guest of last week's episode, which was called We Will Ruin Your Dreams, was Britt Allen from our favourite podcast, The Chain, of which I did a call out on the show and then followed it up on Instagram to get her a copy of Garbage's brand new album, which is not out yet, but it's out next week. And she's such a big fan, but she's had a bit of a rough time and she just admitted on the show that she can't afford it. Fast forward to this morning when Garbage themselves replied to our post on Instagram and said, and I'm going to go find it so I can tell it to you word for word so I don't stuff up the Queen's speech, if it's even, yeah, that's a thing. Yeah, that's a thing. The Queen's speech. Come on, Okay, and Garbage commented on our post on Doug By Us Instagram saying, we got it covered. That was Garbage Official, the band's account. Of then they slid into our DMs, right? Yes, <laughs> then they slid into Brit's DMs and she is getting a copy of Garbage's new album from Garbage. Like, <laughs> I'm just, we make dreams come true and we ruin them because now we're in lockdown and I feel like because we had such a great show <laughs> We're in lockdown, I don't know. I'm so happy with that. It's a good result. <laughs> so it feels happy. good. Um, garbage, no, we exist. <laughs> yeah. Or at least someone involved with garbage. <laughs> it's no, garbage. It's Shirley. It's absolutely Shirley. It is the queen. Um, so speaking of Shirley, do we want to get stuck in and talk about some music, Chris? Yeah. Right. Are you sure? I mean, you yeah. don't have First, to if you don't want to. I, I do have a little bit of uh, outstanding business from two weeks ago. Just this is our first opportunity to say that my Eurovision song from two weeks ago was the winner, All Hail Me. Just wanted to point that out. No, no, yeah. no. I am so proud of you. So at the time of re- – so we recorded last week's episode a little bit early because of said special guest. And um, at that point, you were in the deep delirium of no sleep Eurovision early mornings you were I don't know if you were confident in them winning but you they were your pick like you loved them you loved them so much that you brought them onto the show um I hadn't watched any of it yet and so at that point I'd only gone off what I'd heard and what people had told me and watching their performance like they are so cool I want to see them in concert I want to be part of the Meniskinians which is their fan club. I just made that up then. Um, they are just so cool. Um, they deserve to win. Absolutely. Good. We've covered that off. Okay, great. Um, Eurovision, <laughs> fun, 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 fun. So last so week. We're going we... to get back to garbage. No, nah, yeah. we'll, we'll go from the start. So we had not one, not two, not three, but four songs because I broke the non-existent rules and let Brit bring in both songs because she just seemed like she couldn't decide and it was really hard for her and I just want to make it easy. Um, now you brought in <laughs> um, a song called... Why are you Nin- laughing? <laughs> you, <sorry. laughs> you brought in a song called 1989 by a band, Nesta. Um, now you referenced the fact that I am like the bloody one from the other song. <laughs> With the on the hood of white snakes. What is? I always get those songs confused. You're, you're the girl from the song 1985. Yes. Yeah. Um. I don't know if she's a girl. I think she's a woman. Of which I admit that I well, take that yes. as a compliment. 
um because I very much so want to be skanking it up on the sunset strip and if I look to my left here I've got a Motley Crue poster like I love that shit and I absolutely loved 1989 it blows my mind that it's a new song um because it fits in with like what you referenced all of those beautiful glam rock ballads that just like I wish that those crusty men would sing to me in the front row like it just it's sound everything production wise lyrically it's so it's so that perfect cheese and I liked it and I can absolutely tell that other people would not like it <laughs> because there's something cool about hating that sort of music but um yeah I really loved it and it's so up my alley it's not funny um so per like the key change as well like it has every single tick box for the formula and yeah. I don't know how to add another sentence to that. I should have stopped it. It's... No, you did, but now you're going. <laughs> <laughs> but I feel that Nesta, just for making that song, deserve a PhD in rock ballads because, that's, like, that's, 80s rock that's ballads. That's exactly what they've done. They've studied the rule book and they've made it again now. It's like it's a, it, it's easily a journey song. It's easily, yeah, a white snake song. Or it's even – it's got that little feel of Hall and Oates, but it's a, still a rock song, not a pop song. Like – Man. Oh, it rocked. It's so cool. I adored it. Thank you. That's a, that's good. Now, the other three, yours and Brits, I feel like, funnily enough, they are now because of Doug by Us, but they could all be on the same playlist anyway. Yeah, and, like, listening to them in the order, which I think is why I wanted to go back to the order that we've got them in the show. So you had 1989 by Nesta. And then follow that up with No Gods, No Masters by Garbage, which Britt said in last week's episode, it's got that really cool kind of driving synth and bass that's very 80s, which goes in so perfectly after Nesta. Yeah. Like, it's just, a, it's got that 80s drive. It's like you're, you're walking in the 80s. You go back in time <laughs> as soon as you've got it on. <laughs> it's the bass in that that I loved. Yeah. That's doing the heavy lifting. Oh, no, driving is the best word, better word, actually. It's, the heavy um, driving. Yeah, it's the truck. Yeah. Um, and then you follow that up with Brit's other selection, which now is the number one song in the freaking world, Good For You by Olivia Rodrigo, which steps the tempo up, like it steps it up and ante. Um, it adds on to that rock. So you go from like the glam ballad rock into the kind of garbage 80s influenced rock into that femme rock like it's just this beautiful little progression um of which that song holy hell i've shared it on my socials on my personal socials that album where was that one? like seven years ago when i was heartbroken and that's what so many people have said <laughs> like yeah. that is just everything i was thinking and couldn't say she has just said it and good for you is Paramore's throwback. And after listening to it now for about a week, I think it's a little bit too Misery Business. Like I'm, it's, and listening to those cool mashup, people have actually mashed up Misery Business by Paramore and Good For You. And I feel like it's a little too similar to Misery Business. Like there's that fine line between influence and copy. <laughs> and I just am now a bit angry at it. But definitely when I heard it last week after Brit recommended it, Bob, bang up drove me to listen to the album of which I think is a really good album. Um, yeah. yeah. So th lyrically, it's precisely the same. I mean, it's the same woman going through the exact same life, but it's the same lyrics as um, the, the, as Driver's License, who had a couple of months ago, you can tell it's the same person. But the mood is flipped 180 degrees. Like this is the Bruce Springsteen ballad and here we've got the, yeah, the, well, this is the, I've had, I'm on my second glass of gin, this driver's license. And then this latest <laughs> one is me and my girls have had three UDLs <laughs> yeah. and now we're at karaoke. Oh, yeah. It's like I've stopped crying. I'm now just hating you. And now my friends are angry together with you, yeah. And this dude, like, ooh. <laughs> like he doesn't the, know what he's given up, man. He is, he is messed up. Oh, the best revenge is getting a number one album and two number one singles. <laughs> Because of your breakup. <laughs> and and, uh, and two spots on Doug by Us in 2021. So, yeah, oh, that's the Which is that. the absolute highlight. Um, and the final song from our 
banger of last week, which also just fits in perfectly, which is the icing on the 2021 emo cake. (laughs) That's it. Um, Is Willow feet Travis Barker, Transparent Soul, which is a song that you already knew about, but it just sounds so good together. They're they're really similar, which you don't think like, I I think I mentioned it last week or maybe just in chatting with you, uh, the imagery it's really guitar focused and it's a sick guitar and it's all like she's wearing black, like uh, reminded me of skin from Skunk and Ansi. And then the song didn't rock as hard as the image looked, but it's, that still doesn't matter. <laughs> I think a lot of that's happening with modern artists these days though. Like I feel yeah. that, and I feel like we had, we had that a bit though in the nineties. We did. We, but like, you know, if you look at, I mean, even killing Heidi, for instance, right. Ella had like, collars on and like that very goth look the black dreads but the music's actually quite pop yeah so... five second big day out they had choreographed dancing yeah oh <laughs> <laughs> and the the black vinyl where it went from black to green vinyl and glitter but um yeah i mean i still think that you know it it is a cool look at the moment too that goth look as well it is in fashion chris i'm not sure if you kind of keep up with fashions but it is a hot look right now well, I'm wearing all black, and when I went for my walk, my one hour of exercise during Melbourne lockdown, 70% of people were just wearing black. I don't think so wearing it. black means you're goth. <laughs> no, <laughs> like... but it leans in. It's a little bit. Mm, okay, okay. <laughs> you're a little bit goth. Um, but, yeah, absolute fun. Loved last week. Had an absolute ball with Brit in with us and such a beautiful outcome. Um this week, though, it's just a diff- completely different vibe. It feels that that oh. show was a lifetime ago. Once yep. again, we are, you and I are in lockdown. Once again, we are doing the show via distance. But I can see your face because we're in the video. Um, but, Chris, what are you digging this week? No, I'd like you to go first. Oh, you're such a gentleman. Why is that, though? What are you doing? What have you got up your sleeve? Nothing. Okay, I'm scared. Um, <laughs> cool. Well, I, I mean, I think... I, I did. I don't think I messaged you and I was just like, there is so much, too much. good stuff happening. And yeah. if this show, which I said a few weeks ago was about albums, it would be a completely different thing that I'd be bringing in because St. Vincent's album is off chops, off right. chops. LPX's whole <laughs> LPX's whole EP is out right now, right, and I have been time again. losing I'm my. Talk about LPX again. But she is just like incredible, and she did her first gig in over a year in New York, of which a lot of it was um, on her Instagram story, and I sent it to you because I was like, I wish I was there. It looked like so much goddamn fun. Uh, there is just so many cool albums out right now. There's new stuff from people that we've supported in the past. Tori Forsyth, who was my number one Aussie act of last year, I think, or the year before, you know, her album, her full length is amazing. And I brought in Be Here Now, which was a lead single a couple of years ago. There is so much cool stuff happening. It's really hard, which is the best problem to have. But this week, 17 hours later, I am bringing in a Melbourne band. Hi, I can't even... (laughs) Hiatus Coyote. I can't even say it. I said it. Um, and there's some Hiatus real- Coyote for those playing at home. Yeah, for those of you who don't speak Cassie, which is most of you. Um, and the song I'm bringing in this week is Red Room. And it's... <laughs> and me yesterday was going to bring in a completely different song, but um, it's just... It's just good for the mood right now. And it's just a nice one to chuck the headphones on and listen to alone and listen to within your four walls and just chill out too. And I think that after our teen angst period, (laughs) um, I needed something a bit chiller to relax to. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I love it. I love it heavy and I love it full on and I love teen angst more than Joe Blow. But um, sometimes I just need to stop with the cordial and have some plain water. All right. Well, I'm bringing in, it's a, a slower song as well, but I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to make the vibe sad. Oh. Is that all right? Yeah. It's about time. <laughs> <laughs> well, this song, 
this song was released a couple of weeks ago and you wouldn't think of it knowing that what's happened in Melbourne since. So last year, the novelty wore off pretty quick. We had a few songs that were related to what was what was happening. Like we had, like we had Dutch, <laughs> we had Dutch thrash uh, singing about lockdowns. We had Blink-182 singing about quarantine. We had, a, we had a whole bunch going on. But then during last year, this band were, well, you know, as much as it could be without gigs, in a cycle where they're focusing on their side project, which is their kids' band. The first band I saw out of lockdown, the Teeny Tiny Stevies. Oh, hang on. Can I just pause you? Because I literally have a delivery and Gordon's in a meeting. All right. And that was a good point to pause you. Teeny yeah. Tiny Stevies. Teeny Tiny Stevies, the side project that has blown up and become larger than the initial band that's been going on for more than 10 years. I wanted to preface this by saying, I know you don't like me bagging the Veronicas, but they're not my favourite Australian singing sisters. <laughs> there are several There are several great ones that we love here on Dug By Us. We're fans of Blues. Oh. Uh, Who also have new stuff. Oh. There's, there's so much going on. Charmer Finches. Love them. Oh. The Little Stevies released a song about last year, two weeks ago, and now we're in lockdown again. I said to Bill, I said, mate, you didn't have to organise another outbreak and a lockdown just to publicise your song. It's going a bit far. Stop it. Hang but on. She said, Who's Bill? Oh, Bill is one of the teeny tiny Stevies. She's also one of the little Stevies, yes. So Billa and Bethany, Bill and Beth. They released a song a couple of weeks ago called Melbourne Will Meet Outside, uh, reflecting on last year, and now we're back in that zone again. So uh, if you just want to, you know, mull in that for a little while and get back into what it felt like to be in August, then so not in, but it's a great song. I'm, ac- I'm absolutely back to where it felt like in August. I feel like I'm in my sixth week of lockdown and it's been a few days. <laughs> in four days, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, that is cool. I love that. And I'm happy for a bit of a change in the sound. I feel that... Um, yeah, I feel like it's going to suit maybe the sixth and seventh day of lockdown. So <laughs> maybe, but yeah, you're right. Like there are so many songs I could have done. There's a lot. There is a, a lot, lot, which is good. Selection issues for Luke Beveridge heading into this weekend's game. Yeah, it's a good problem. That what was that? Did we just I don't have know, like forty nine? Yeah, that was lame. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, you can you can edit it out. <laughs> Nah, I'm leaving that in to embarrass you. Um, thanks. I'm beyond that now. I don't care. Yeah, hey, I, that's what happens when you leave me in the driving seat. Uh, I don't know why I questioned seat. I was like, no, that's the term. <laughs> um, I'm absolutely losing the plot. Chris, thank you so much. This brought me some giggles and smiles in a pretty drab kind of few days. So thanks, mate. Rock and roll. We will... Uh... We'll continue to dive into the music and share it around as best we can. Yeah, and thank you for listening and thank you for your support, uh, everybody, around um, Brit's joy of getting Garbage's new album from Garbage. It's been really lovely seeing some nice messages and people just feeling really positive around that little story arc. It was divine. And thank I you, Garbage. Made this podcast into the, uh, into the stage where we now have story arcs. Like, how could this? <laughs> the make a wish foundation sort of um <laughs> but yeah thank you and thank you not for print for having us as part of their network and i'm going to stop waffling on and just play some music <laughs>